Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. (laughs) One and only, Steve Harvey. (laughs) Got a radio show. Well, all right. I learned something. And it's sharing time. And I am uh, ever appreciated. Uh, I do appreciate God for all that he allows me to learn in my life. One of the best lessons I've learned is that hardship teaches you some great lessons. Challenges brings about some of my best results. I think what I'm trying to say is in every challenge and hardship, every setback, I've learned something so, so valuable. So here's here's what I've, you know, I've, I've known this, but I, I've just learned it at a different angle. Appreciation and gratitude is the key to having more. Now, I don't know how that sounds to you, but I, I can't tell you how true it is. God being fair and just as he really is. He really is. He's a fair and a just God. What's most beneficial to us is he happens to be full of mercy and grace. And I'm telling you something, man. I've probably benefited from his grace and mercy more than anything else. I mean, really, man, if it wasn't for him just forgiving me and then for him just touching my life the way he has. I mean, I'm not, I'm not here in this position today. I'm just not. But a funny thing has happened along the way, even to you, if you look at it. Is that your genuine appreciation and gratitude has been the key to you having more for your continued blessings and for making room For heaven to open up and pour out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. If you look at it, see God being a fair and just God, which he is. Why would he put more on you than you can bear? If you've noticed everything that's happened in your life, if you're still here, you've made it. You know, forget how rough it was. Got that. But you made it. Forget what it sent you through and it how it made you feel. 
you made it. Now, what makes people give up and you hear about people committing suicide is they leave the God out of their life. And they start allowing that other voice to control. And if it's really true that God never puts more on you than you can bear, as long as you stay connected to God, you can get through anything. But you lose that connection. You lose that communication. You lose that relationship with him. If you're not having a relationship with God, then who you having a relationship with? Now, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't but two forces at work at all time. It's good and evil. It's positive and negative. It's God. It's Satan. Now, this, this is at work all the time. So if you're not being positive about everything, you leave room for negativity to step in. If, you, if you're not trying to be righteous in your way, then you allow evil to step in. If you don't work on your relationship with God, come on now, look who you letting step in. So now, I'm, I'm asking you to understand that God never puts more on you than you can bear. Okay, now that we got that clear, that's a fact. Okay, now with that fact in mind, let's go over this right here. Why would God, being as just and merciful as he is, put more on you than you can bear. Example, if God is giving you blessings and all you're doing is complaining about them, you're never showing any appreciation or gratitude about it, why would he give you some more stuff to be ungrateful for? Why would he give you some more stuff to complain about? Why would he give you some more stuff that you would not show any more appreciation for? I mean, this thing is real simple, man, ain't it? If you think about it. So a lot of times, man, when I was going through my positions of not having and and wondering and all like here, I ended up checking myself and going, man, I'm not even showing any gratitude or appreciation for the things he has done for me. Start showing some appreciation and gratitude because it's the key to having more. It's the key to continued blessings. It's the key to the windows of heaven opening up and pouring out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. It's the appreciation and gratitude of what you already have. As minimal as it may appear to be right now for you, it is still what you have. But if you've shown no no, no gratitude for the minimal, why would he give you the maximum? I mean, I'm just really just trying to put it real, real simple so I can keep understanding this thing right here. So let me give you an example in my life. I had gotten so busy at one point that I had began to complain about how busy I was. This is true because I I am busy. But it ain't the busy part because I asked to be busy. You know, I asked God to give me opportunities and to make a way for me. Well, in that, you got to do something and you got to get busy. But I would I began to complain about the busyness and how busy I was. And I noticed that a couple of things slowed up for me. So I had got to the point where I wasn't showing real gratitude for it. Well, I looked up and a couple of things started slowing down. And then I had to catch myself. And I went, wow, man, you have got to start embracing the fact that you are this busy. Embrace the fact that what all comes along with it, because to whom much is given, much is required. You got to start embracing the requirement part if you want to continue with the giving part. So I changed my attitude. I caught myself and I started thanking him and showing real gratitude for how busy I was instead of complaining about how busy I was. And then guess what? It opened up the windows of heaven and some more blessings got poured out. It just works that way all the time. For everybody, for me, for you, for everybody. So listen, y'all, again, your appreciation and gratitude is the key to having more. Your appreciation and gratitude is the key to continued blessings. And your appreciation and gratitude is the only way that you can get those windows of heaven to open up and pour out these blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. You got to act like you're glad for what you got in order to get more. You feel me? (laughs) Let's go.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Good morning, everybody. I cannot believe it. Monday, you back again. You just left, and now you are back again. But that's okay. We're going to do this. Isn't that right? Shirley Strawberry for the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Isn't that right? We Happy it. Monday. <laughs> it is correct, Jay. Good morning to you. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Monday's back up in here again. What about it? What about it? Call it for real. What's going on Monday morning to you, girl? Happy Monday morning to you, too, Jay. What's up, crew? What's going on? And my writing partner in crime, my sick buddy. What's up? Junior's in the house. What's up, Junior? Jay, it just left. <laughs> it just left. <laughs> well, we hit out. What are you talking about? Oh, what just left? Monday. Monday. Monday just left. <laughs> it, it's uh, back for It just left. I just I forgot the right. joke already. Got the joke. <laughs> and last but <laughs> not least, it. he is the king of pranks. Y'all put your hands together. For Tom, Tom, Mr. Thomas Miles, y'all in the building. What's up? Yeah, yeah. Hey, top of the morning. It's Monday morning to everybody. Yeah, man. Good it's morning. It's all up in the camera. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. We see you. I had a really oh, good morning. Nice really the, good morning. As long as my teeth <laughs> white, I'm good. <laughs> your teeth been white, man. <laughs> yeah. I had a good weekend, y'all. A really good weekend. A really good weekend. Oh, really okay, good. Jay. How was your weekend? Well, I was in Piedmont Park at the Dogwood Festival. They do this every year. Thousands. You went down thousands. there? I went down there. It was so nice. I had my mask on. And this is what I was doing. I was passing out samples of my nuts, which was kind of weird because <laughs> I would go up to these guys and say, hey, man. Would you like to try my nuts? And uh, it, it kind of got, I got a lot of weird looks, a lot of weird looks, but then they would uh, take it. Yeah. Them. Yeah, but here's the whole thing, Tommy. They would come back later <laughs> on. They'd come back later on, going, hey, man, I really like your nuts. And so uh, that was a good feeling. <laughs> that's that was. They're good, Jay. Your nuts are good. I, I can testify to that. I, I I'm not going to ever say I'm that not, right I'm there. I'm not going to say that. Say I'm not that. Say that's that's because you haven't anybody. tried them. That's I don't care they're the best ones ever. I'm not going to I'm not saying what. I'm with Tommy. I'm not saying it. <laughs> we have Hot. salted, unsalted. We have uh, <laughs> lemon pepper. So, I mean. <laughs> We're not saying that. If you, so even, that. Let me ask you this. So, you're saying if they're good, you're not going to say anything. I ain't going to say that to you, Jay. You know, you know, much success with them, but I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah. That's all I can say. Much success. I would prefer to say Tommy Grits. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to say that. Wow. Hey, did anybody? Wow. Did anybody go to uh, Obama's uh, birthday party, his 60th bash? Any Tommy, months? I thought you was going. What happened? I, yeah, you, you know said, what? I didn't go. Uh, I, my wife and kids came to D.C. and my mother, you know, I tried mm. to tell Barack, I, you know, I can't make this, you know, next time. Oh, Barack, you're in a first yeah. name basis. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Carla, yeah. I mean, he called me few. He Barack. called me few. You know, we nicknamed to All Barack. right. <laughs> okay, we're moving on uh, after that. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we're going to talk uh, to Bitterman and uh, see if we can... I don't know. We'll just listen to the to the concerns of the people. We're starting off. I guess. We're starting off what, off. Jay? We're, start- uh, we're not trying to help. If you get help, it's on no. your own, okay? <laughs> Bitter man, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time now, ladies and gentlemen, for Ask Bitter Man. Your hmm. disclaimer, please, sir. <clears throat> if you get some help out of this, it's on you, because that's not what I'm trying to do at all. Help you with anything. Why? <laughs> at all. Go ahead, Shirley. It's so nice to just try and help someone. But people the need observant. to know that they're not going to get help, so they know in the beginning. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> You're not sitting there right. looking for help. Go ahead, Shirley. <laughs> all right, well, let's not help Jesse in Charlotte then. Uh, uh-huh. Jesse writes, I'm a 43-year-old single woman, and for the past three years, I've worked with a guy with a great personality and a very nice baritone voice. We talk at least twice a week while I'm at work, but we have never met. He works in a different division two hours away from my office, and he asked if we could finally meet, and I said, sure. Then I found him on Facebook, and he is not my type at all. He looks like Barry White. How can I cancel a date with him without jeopardizing our professional relationship? 
What's wrong with Barry White? I love Barry White. You just White. have to, you have to be. <laughs> <Barry Bear. laughs> doom, 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 doom. I can't go with you. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> hang out with you. No way, no how. Do 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 do, do 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 do. I've tried everything I could try, but you just ain't gonna cut it. Do 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 do, do 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 do. I love me some beer. I All do right, too. Uh, <laughs> I love you know Franklin the Giant used to call Barry White the Walrus of Love. He hated that name. It was. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Would you? Do, 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 I, do. I liked Maestro. I liked the Maestro. Maestro. Yeah, I can't yeah. go with you. There's no way we can get together. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. Ain't, ain't no playing your game, baby. Ain't, ain't we playing your game, baby? We ain't doing nothing. Else. All right, All right moving on to Rhonda in Milwaukee. Right. Rhonda says, my daughter is 15 years old and has the worst attitude of any teenager I've ever met. She looks at me like I'm crazy when I talk to her and it makes me feel like I'm bothering her. All she does is ignore me, look at her phone, and roll her eyes when I reprimand her. She shushes me if she's tired of talking to me, and I almost slapped her yesterday. Mm. If I send her to her dad, it won't be good because he's got a short fuse. What should I do? Well, this is all on you. If you hadn't started whooping behind around three, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now you got this problem. Had you been, you know, deep into the behind whooping round two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, you wouldn't have Pretty a backhand, right. something about a backhand that you will remember for your entire life. And I you know, I out of nowhere backhand, you know, where you think that you don't see it coming, just right across your lips. Or if you're too big to run after that child, make that child come to you and then pop them in the mouth. That goes a long way. It helped me. I've never been to jail, never been in any trouble, because I got the backhand. Come here. Come here. Come, so no, come here. You know. Come over here. Move your hand. Move your damn hand. Bop. Now go outside and play. Like, would you really feel like playing after that? But you, that's what happened. That's those are the things. So all yeah, this hard, is on it's you. It's kind of hard to play, Jay. You probably, it is. It's hard to it play is. after getting smacked in the mouth. It's very really yeah, hard. Yeah, it is. It is. Hard. Mm. It's hard to go out and have a good time <laughs> <laughs> when, when your lips are stinging. It, it's just. <laughs> it's, it's ain't, no fun, ain't no yeah. fun in red light, green light <laughs> when your lip is swollen. <laughs> When you, when your right. lip has a sting to it, it's, you can't have fun. You just can't. Go ahead. All right. What's the next All right. One? Moving on to Sherry in Houston. Sherry says, I'm 57 years old and my boyfriend and I go to a church that constantly preaches about living in sin. I told my boyfriend that it doesn't apply to us because we're older and we have been dating for almost 20 years and moved in together 12 years ago. Pastor has tried to coerce my boyfriend into marrying me, and that's not what we want to do. We love our church, but we are sick of being judged. How do we tell Pastor to leave us alone? Wow. You said, Pastor, wow, you asked the pastor, could you have a conference with him? You want a private conference? Make sure he brings his wife because you don't want nothing out the way. So the pastor is in the room with his wife. You there with your boyfriend and you say, Pastor, I have some things that are deep on my mind that are bothering me. And I want to share this with you in a religious way. You need to mind your own damn business and wow. stay out of my damn business. Okay. I've been at this church for quite some time. I like tithing. I like the music. But I need you to stay out my damn business okay and nobody will know you said it but the pastor's wife and she ain't gonna tell nobody you cuss his ass out <laughs> but that's what you need to do tell your pastor J. Anthony Brown said you need to mind your own damn business but they living in sin though Jay. they, <laughs> they ain't living in, in no sin 
According to the word. Uh, what <laughs> is <laughs> the word? Uh huh, Tommy. Uh, uh, it's whatever yeah. on the word. It's yeah. whatever pick, on the word. Pick out the Bible what you want that makes you live. That's right. Do whatever you want. You can, no. <laughs> Pick out the Bible. Wow. Oh, you're one of those. Okay, we're Go, moving on. Everything in there ain't for you. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. <laughs> Curious in Atlanta says, I went, to Con- I went to Kanye's listening party at his house last week. You know his house, Mercedes Benz Dome. Uh, mm. oh. and, uh, <laughs> the stadium. <laughs> yeah. And that I was, was seated <laughs> in a VIP area, and a very popular rapper was talking to me all night and giving me all of his attention. He was so mature and well-spoken that it intrigued me, and as we were leaving, he said, hopefully our paths will cross again. Does that mean he was intrigued by me, or was he just being polite? Should I reach out to him on Instagram? Yes, you should. Okay. And first of all, if the rapper used the word intrigue, <laughs> he said, yes. if he used the word intrigue, he's a good guy. <laughs> It's only one rapper in Atlanta gonna use intrigue. Yeah. I've never heard a rapper use the word intrigue. That's a good guy. You got you got a catch right there, girl. All that right, was, bitter man. <laughs> Coming up next, we got church complaints with Deacon Def Jam and Reverend Adnoy right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann is standing by with our national news. And in entertainment news, President Obama's 60th birthday party was epic. Yes, it was. Mm. Plus, in other trending news, the Olympics are over now. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is Monday. Time for church complaints with Dick and Def Jam and Reverend Adnoy. Uh. Yes, yes. Uh. Uh, welcome to the uh, JPJJ. Ooh. That is uh. the... Jackpot joined of uh, Jerusalem. Yes, ching, yes. ching. Hallelujah. Ha- yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, yes. all right. As you know, I am Deacon Death Jam, and uh, joining me, of course, is the wonderful <laughs> Reverend Ed No. Uh, 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 uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh, so, I've never been this stopped up this way I am now. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Did you get your vaccine? Is, what is there's going? so much in there that I just couldn't get. I don't know how I'm going to get this out, but why I'll try to make you, it. Why, go ahead. why you don't lot. blow your nose? I, don't I've you tried do? that. It's just, it's full. I'm just saying they're full. Go right ahead. <laughs> TMI. Right. Uh, uh, right. All right. Well, let me put this out there. I'm going to be giving you uh, the church complaints. and add uh-huh. noise. If he can get it out of his nose, he's going to be giving you the church announcements. Announcements, uh, yes. Go right ahead. Uh, uh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. All right. Cornbread Willie is asking for the COVID medicine. Uh, mm-hmm. He would like us to put it, uh, put the medicine in his cornbread. As you know, he eats cornbread uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh-huh. Uh, do you think we can get that approved to put it in his cornbread? That's that is for a us great to... idea. He eats cornbread all the time. And right. if you put it in there, he'll never know. That way he'll be vaccinated and that will be great for everybody to get him vaccinated that is perfect i like that idea uh-uh. and, and what? he gets vaccinated, vaccinated. yeah through the cornbread yeah, through yeah the, with the cornbread. Mm, vaccinated mm. he needs to be vaccinated anyway we have a lost and found report from the janitor over the weekend he found one black see-through waist slip a half a can of coke an empty purple bottle and a glass eye. The eye was in the bag. So if these are your items, we need you to go. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What are we missing? It was, it a-, was a black see-through waist slip, a half a can of Coke, and an empty purple bag, and a glass eye. The eye was in the bag. So, so it was that a your, crown, uh, crown we royal don't, bag? Uh, it was turned inside out, so I don't know if it was crown royal or not, but there oh, was no. an eye okay. in the bag. And if these <laughs> are your items, please report to Lost and Found to retrieve them. I'm sure you need you, these items. Go right ahead. Missing an eye. They must have missing drunk the crown and took In the other eye. words, come on down and get it. We'll keep an eye out for you. <laughs> 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 Just pour the oh, coke come out. On, come on down yeah. and get it. We'll keep an eye out keep for you. <laughs> Go right ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, here's the situation. <laughs> Bo Willie. Bo Willie has just found out that Bo Willie Jr. and Flo Willie 
mm-hmm. are not his uh, set of twins. As you know, they are 35. <laughs> they are 35 years old now. They have found out that their father is Joe Willie, which is Bo's, which is Bo's younger brother. Yes. Uh, therefore, uh, Joe's funeral is this coming Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and the family is not paying for the funeral. We need to decide if we're going to pay for the uh-huh. funeral. You, as you know, they are members of the uh, uh, JPJJ. Uh-huh. I understand it. In other words, she had sex with the other Willie. See what I did there? Yeah. See what I did? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cracking me up. I really am. I'm cracking me up. <laughs> okay. A $5 bet. Are you all right? I'm finished. I'm uh-huh. done was the reasons the paramedics had to be called to Wilhelmina Jeffcoat's house over the weekend. Uh, they had to use the jaws of life to get her out of a hula hoop. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> what happened? The jaw? <laughs> the, jaw <laughs> the jaws of I missed it. The bet, the bet wasn't that she could hula hoop. The bet was, uh, could she get in it? She did, <laughs> and she won. So that. <laughs> And they cut her out of that. They cut her out of it, so they had to call the church. paramedics. For her. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. All right. right. Uh, the wheelchair track team ministry uh, wants to challenge the Jamaican girls track team in the 4x100 relay. Uh, for the, they want to challenge them for their gold medal. Now, as you know, the wheelchair track team uh, consists of Rosie, Dolores, Celestine, and Francis. Uh, and they want to... They want to challenge the Jamaicans in a 4x100 relay. So uh, it's all about us if we're going to support them on uh, getting this done uh, at night. That's Celestine <laughs> stuff, yeah. though. That's Celestine. Celestine. Mm-hmm. I would definitely They're going to lose. They're going to lose to Jamaica. I put my money on the wheelchair. I put my money on the wheelchair. Here we go. Okay. I know they're going to they be rolling. We know yeah, they're going to be rolling. rolling. I like that. <laughs> they're going to be rolling. For sure. Con- congratulations go out to Miss Laquifa Jenkins. She is the winner of the small chow that sounds like the devil. I had an opportunity to interview oh, this little girl. What? The small child that sounds like the devil when she talks. I was up there and I <laughs> yeah, interviewed her. I said, my face. how old are you? <laughs> I'm seven. And I, it was the most scary thing I ever seen in my life. <laughs> how, how old are you, little girl? I'm seven. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was scary. I mean, I was a little tiny girl. I walked up to her and how old are you, little girl? I'm seven. Seven years old, you heard what I said. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sister Gretchen Latimo, who shouts every Sunday with a uh, a triple hallelujah flip and a praise the Lord dismount, says, tell Simone Biles that she is the real goat at the end of the day, and she wants her respect. I'm just saying, Sister Gretchen say put some spec on her name. That's all she wants. <laughs> Put some respect on her name. All right. Over the weekend, over the weekend, the Henpeck men's meeting had to be canceled. Mm. The Henpeck <laughs> men's meeting had to be canceled when the president's wife called him up and said, I need you to bring your ass home now, right now. <laughs> He adjourned the meeting and nobody got to say anything. So that happened over the weekend. Wow. <laughs> she go right ahead. All sir. right, we got we got a problem. The unvaccinated members would like to challenge the vaccinated members in a game of touch football. I don't think this is gonna work out that well. I really don't. But somebody finna get it. <laughs> they wanna play them somebody in touch football. I I don't like that. I really don't like that. <laughs> Okay. All right. uh, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> thank you, Reverend Adnoy and Deacon Def Jam, for those church complaints coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so President Obama had his party, okay? He turned 60. He had his 60th birthday party. It was at Martha's Vineyard. 
it was epic, okay? It was epic. We all saw the video that Erica Badu posted of uh, 44 dancing at the party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. was cool. That it. was cool. I saw mm-hmm. it. I did see it. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. We heard special guests Beyonce, Jay-Z, Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, George Clooney, Jennifer Hudson, Don Cheadle, Dwayne Wade, Alicia Keys, John wow. Legend, all of them saying happy birthday Whoa. to our forever president. Also, bathroom amenities included antiperspirant wipes and Advil, okay? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Make a note I of like that, that for the Boy, next party. Like yeah. He uh-huh. really cares. He really cares. Uh-huh. Yeah, he does. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, rapper Trap Beckham and his manager posted pictures of themselves smoking cannabis, which is legal in Massachusetts, but they had to take their pictures down. The Roots Quest Love was asked to help coordinate a meat free menu. However, we saw pics of steak, chicken, and shrimp. <laughs> mm. uh, also, okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he turned 60, what a okay? Yeah. <laughs> These vegans uh, getting also, out there of hand, the- ain't they? <laughs> there was cigars, there was s'mores, there was uh, Mexican hot chocolate, brownies, and watermelon. It was sounds like a good time had by all, okay? All. Yeah. That's and what watermelon. I thought. Did I you say watermelon and watermelon? So, yeah, I said watermelon and brownie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. brownie. I bet, I bet nobody things. touched it. I bet it was just still sitting there because, you know, people <laughs> don't want nobody to see them eating watermelon. Unless it's diced up. You know, if it's on the rind, it's still sitting there. No, it needs to be in a bowl, dice. It needs to be in a bowl, be. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did see a couple of slices on a plate on the rind. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did see that on the gram. Uh, what? <laughs> there are some black people who don't give a damn. If it's watermelon, it's watermelon. You know, it's some of us go in. I mean, it's the best time. But, it you is, know, it happy is. birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Yeah. 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 Happy okay. birthday. I heard the, uh, the police were hating because afterwards it was just so much traffic, so they were angry. I was like, y'll just hate me. Oh, y'all shut just up. Yeah. Hate just hate me. the president. Yeah, the president. The president. The president. about, that's all. Yeah, yeah, that's it, Tommy. Just straight hate. That's it. Just straight hate. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of party, the party is over. There were the most... Unusual games in history, and now the Summer Olympics in Tokyo have come to a close wow. after being postponed for a year due to COVID-19 and ultimately held without spectators for safety reasons. Uh, the Olympics delivered some memorable moments. The United States came away with the most goal, 39 medals, and the most medals overall, 113. Yep. China was number two in both counts. What were you going to say, nephew? I'm, I watched it. I watched a lot of it. We, uh, I watched a lot I, of them. I, I did too. I was, it was great. I was mm-hmm. really glad that the basketball team took the gold. I was. I that was yes. down to the kind of down yes. to the men wild, and women. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, men and women. You're right, Carl. Men and women. Mm-hmm. We took the gold. Yeah, mm-hmm. great you know the most useless event. You know the Good most moment. useless event at the Olympics was race walking. I don't need to watch something I can already do. <laughs> race walking? That race, race, that race walking. walking got on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all just, But oh, look at you oh, staying just there and that. just watching it, huh? All right. Yeah, I got on my nerves. I can do this. Come on, right. Jay. It's time for today's headlines. All right, everybody. It's time for Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, and good morning. In Chicago, one police officer is dead. Another is hospitalized and fighting for his life as a result of the apparent gun battle that ensued during a traffic stop. In total, 63 people were shot in Chi-Town over the weekend all over that town. Mayor Lori Lightfoot told reporters that police are not the enemy, that guns and gangs are. Authorities say that an officer stopped a car with two men and a woman inside, and that one of the men opened fire. All three of those people, by the way, are under arrest. U.S. senators met over the weekend again with the aim of working out a deal on the infrastructure bill worth a little over $1 trillion. The Senate was set to begin its summer recess. However, Majority Leader Charles Schumer says, ah, you're going to remain in session until a package is passed and that's it. Senators voted 67 to 27 to end debate on the measure, but some Republicans are trying to put off a final vote, insisting that it all costs too much. The nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, tells NBC's Meet the Press, 
He thinks that once the Food and Drug Administration gives its final and full approval to the Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson Johnson vaccines, that those people holding out will probably change their minds about the safetiness of the serum. The time has come. We've got to go the extra step to get people vaccinated. You want to persuade them? That's good. And I believe that some people on their own, once it gets approved as a full approval, will go ahead and get vaccinated. You may remember that the COVID vaccines were initially only okayed for emergency use. So that's what we're talking about. Right now, the Biden administration is requiring all federal workers to be either vaccinated or subjected to regular coronavirus testing. There are calls in Cleveland for a review of how judges rule and the establishment of a database in the wake of two vastly and many say unfair judicial decisions. A white woman who stole $250,000 in public funds was given probation by a white female judge while a black woman who pilfered 40000 was sent to jail for 18 months by a white male judge. The NAACP, faith organizations, uh, social activists, both current and former judges, they're all very, very upset by the two rulings, which they say reinforce the feeling that judges in this country disproportionately save their harshest penalties for people of color. Finally, the Tokyo Olympics, yes, as you heard, closed yesterday, a ceremony that marked the end of over two weeks of sports competitions without the stands filled with fans. Thanks to COVID, the sounds of cheers were, was piped in, were piped in. Athletes marched by country wearing masks. The U.S. won gold medals, as you heard Shirley talk about, but perhaps the bronze medal won by Simone Biles got the greatest it's attention. It's been a long journey. Um, the Olympics was not how I expected it to go, but putting my mental and my physical health first will And she was very, very proud, and we were proud of her. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Tommy. He's the president and CEO of Team Tommy. So why don't you do the honors by introducing him, please? Y'all sure y'all want to go in there today? I'll take you in there now. (laughs) Uh I'll tear your ticket and take you on in. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Buckle up and hold on tight. We're on our way deep, deep into the mind, a mind that you've never even had an idea that it existed. We're going deep into the mind of Jay Anthony Brown. There are no refunds. There is no turning back. Jay Anthony Brown, (laughs) take it away. Once you come in here, you're on your own. Get ready, Charlotte. It's August the 21st. I'm coming to town. Charlotte, get ready. Get ready. Okay, now last week I kind of, you know, talked about ladies and did stuff with advice. We talked about baby hair, yada, yada, yada. This week I want to talk to the men. I want to be serious with the men. Especially if you're a man, say, in the age of 25, 26, you, you just reach manhood. You're stepping out on your uh-huh. own. Okay, that's great. Okay. There's some things that you need. I mean, I don't have all of them. It's not a long list. These are a few things you need. Number one, you need your own damn place. You don't need to be staying Thank you. with that's true. your mama. Gotcha. You don't need to be. And if you stand with a girl, that's okay. I don't mind you shacking up. I'm not that religious. If y'all want to shack up. You need to be paying for every damn thing. We ain't splitting nothing. Don't, don't split <laughs> okay. nothing, ladies. Okay. Um, if I'm there with if you he if he not paying for every damn thing, he needs um. to be in a, on his own. Number two, you need a you need your own car. You gotta have a car. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, look, if you're that good in the bedroom, she only gonna pick you up two or three times. After that, <laughs> after that, partner, Max. <laughs> After that, <laughs> you got to get your own damn transportation. It, it ain't gonna be for two times, Jay. <laughs> you, you know, that she'll go. It's good, and he good in the bedroom. Let me go get this Negro, and then mm-hmm. but this ain't gonna happen every time. Get mm-hmm. you a car. Now the last one, in order to be a real player, to be gangster, to be out right. there in them streets where you got your stuff together, and nobody looking at you sideways, you need a washer. And a dryer. I mean, you might laugh. Man. Don't laugh. Because you laugh. cannot, That's you true. cannot <laughs> be hard with $200 shoes, $200 pairs of pants, $800 t shirt, a $400 belt. You got gold around your neck can't, with your can't, can't ass sitting, sitting in the laundromat waiting, <laughs> waiting for something to dry. This is not a hard move. You don't know how stupid you, and you pulled up in a Benz, and you sitting in the <laughs> laundromat folding drawers. Dude, this is not a good look. This oh is, don't do this to yourself. Get you, you a washer it. and a dryer. 
top yeah. load or side by side. That's all I got to say. I'm done. I love I'm it. Done. Yeah. I'm done. Great I'm advice, done. Jay. All right, thank you. Coming, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending viral news, the police department in Wyoming, Michigan, is receiving a lot of backlash after racially profiling and arresting at gunpoint two African-American men and a 15-year-old African-American teen. All they were doing was simply touring a house for sale, okay? Now, this is according to the New York Post. Army veteran Roy Thorne and his 15-year-old son Samuel were with their real estate agent, Roy Brown, to tour a home in the Grand Rapids area and soon found themselves handcuffed with guns drawn by half a dozen cops. This is after a neighbor saw the men entering the home and reported a break-in. Roy Thorne, the realtor, then told his son and Brown to get down and stay away from the windows. Uh, Thorne spotted an officer in the backyard and yelled to him several times through an open window. The officer pointed his gun at Thorne uh, and he said, uh, leading him to duck. He told the officer there were three of them in the house and they were coming out with their hands up. He made sure his son was behind him. I was scared, Thorne said. I was scared for my son. Brown said he thought we are going to die today. All three were cuffed and put into police vehicles and were only released after Brown showed his real estate credentials and allowed and, and was allowed to explain the situation. Officers then talked to the white couple who had called 911, but the damage was already done. Thorne says 15-year-old Samuel is now paranoid. Who wouldn't be? I ask. Oh, Having so to what's deal the, with this. Here we go again. I, here we go again. You can't even I, I go What I don't get is, is, yeah, what I don't get is, you can't walk in this house and see what's going on in a party. You got to come in there with guns drawn I, 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 off the jump. There's no conversation. Right. There's no talking. Yeah, Let's try to right. figure yeah. out what's no. going on. That to me would seem to be what a, a, a if I was an officer, what I want to do is I want to walk up and see what's going on. Let me make sure the, the call is legitimate. But you, you got to go in already with guns cocked and ready loaded. And there's no telling what could have happened. Fortunately, it didn't go far left as it could yeah. have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, I, I, it didn't I'm, even seem I'm that they him. went they, inside. It, exactly. it didn't even seem that way. It mm-hmm. seemed like they were outside and they happened to see that. So if they had done mm-hmm. the wrong thing, this could have been tragic. Like you said, there's just no, right. they just ready. They just, y'all right. just black ready men, to. Two black and men child. in an empty house and a child. Uh, go, that's all they needed to hear. And they were on ready, really. set, go. That's all they needed so, to hear. So, so, so for me, I get out of this whole situation. Like, we can't even buy a house no more. We, we no, can't look at right. houses now. No. Right. But, but let me ask this: exactly. what, what, what can you steal out of an empty house? Tom, what, you bought a house. What, what are we I, taking? I mean, you Carl, know, you some of those house? houses are staged. House? Yeah, oh, okay. some, some okay. of them okay. are staged. Some of, I got yeah. But I don't know if that was the case. It, it, that, that's not even the issue. The issue is three black men, two black men, and a, and a teen in a in a house. And so I'm calling the cops, and the cops come. You know, and they put them in the car. You know, I, I'm with the man who said he thought they were going to die today because that that could have easily happened. Easily, it happens far too often. Any uh, apology the, from the people that made the call? Any apology no. from them? Um, Probably nope. not. Well, Hell no. because before no. there uh, were break-ins <laughs> in that area, they assumed that the potential suspects came back. How do you know? How yeah. who are you? Because what, they were what, black. How you know all this? Just, it was because just they were because black. they were black. Yes, they you were black. racial profiled them, and <laughs> yeah. so did the police. That's because all. Because they were is, black. Period. That's it. Yeah. They, yeah. They'll yeah. take your word. Yeah, they'll take yes. your word over it because you know because they're black. Mm-hmm. <sighs> mm-hmm. Here we go. This is upsetting. Go, it's just upsetting. Mm-hmm. You can't even look for a home, yeah. and the real yeah. estate agent can't even do his job. He was doing his job, showing the property. Showing the house. They were cuffed and in the police car. (laughs) Yeah, I saw the video. Uh, It's uh, upsetting, very upsetting. Very much so. Let's just um, add this to the list. Can you file a lawsuit for stuff like that? I wonder. I wonder if you can. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Um, we'll we'll keep our eyes on this story and let you know as it develops. Uh, coming up, the nephew with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, my girl is wild and free. Whoa. Huh. Uh, we'll get into that. Whoa. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Wait till you hear it. We'll get into that in just a few. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got, Neff? Baby chick. Baby, baby chick. chick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What baby up, baby chick? chick? Baby, baby chick. chick. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Watch where I'm going. Watch me make a hard clunk. left. Let's baby go, cat dog. Okay. Baby chick. I'm trying to uh, reach Warren, the manager. Is he here? Hold for me one second, please. This is Warren. Thank you for calling. May I help you? Yeah, you, are you the manager there? Yes, sir. Your name Warren? Yes, sir. This is Warren. Okay, I, I need to actually file a lawsuit on y'all, and I'm actually calling you first to let you know that I'm getting ready to file a lawsuit on the whole grocery store uh, uh, for what did happen to me. Uh, sir, um, let me let me get, uh, hold on a second. Sir, let me do this. Let me, let me, uh, what, what did you say your name was? My name is Evans. Evans is my name. So Evans is your last name. Let me let me write this down. And you came into my store. Did you have an accident in my store or something? I'm not exactly sure what you're calling about. I I, I had no accident. What happened was I came in there yesterday and I bought uh, a bunch of groceries and I bought a carton of eggs. Right. Now when I got home, I I was checking to make sure the eggs didn't didn't break on the way home. When I got home, there was a baby chick inside the egg carton, man. One of the eggs had it had hatched and got my kids traumatized. Now they don't even want to eat breakfast or nothing around here because there's a baby chick Wait. inside the card the eggs. Uh, that don't make no sense, man. Sir, um, <laughs> I don't mean to. Uh, let me. So you tell me there was a, a, a chicken, a baby chicken, actual chicken in the There's egg? There was a baby chick inside the carton of eggs, man. Okay. And it got my kids traumatized, man. Don't nobody okay, want to okay, eat nothing. got eggs if you're just calm, if you're calm, here because sir, if you just calm down for one second. Listen. Um, put that chick down. What I told y'all, put that chicken down in there. Put it down. It might have rabies. Say what the? I don't even think that that's possible, first of all. If you had... Any idea how this thing comes from the farm to the store? It is. It, they go over these eggs a countless number of times, and the temperature in the freezer, first of all, wouldn't even allow for a chicken to be alive. If you had a baby, I don't. Well, I, I, this I one, know. This, this, one, be, this one, my, I, I don't know how this one got past the system. Okay, but what I do know is we got a baby chick over here running around because y'all. Store ain't doing what y'all supposed to do, man. And I got and now my kids are traumatized behind this. When did you say you were in here, sir? I was in there yesterday. I bought the eggs yesterday, man. In <laughs> down here in yeah. Elm Street. Yes, I bought them at the grocery store. I sure did. Okay, let's do this. Why don't you bring the eggs in to me and the chick? So now you that... want me to transport a baby chick back to the grocery store? I all my. my... Look, we already traumatized over here already behind this doggone baby chick, man. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what you're trying to pull here, but I, I just don't, I don't think that. First of all, any anyone with common sense would tell you that that's not possible. First of all, you can't have a baby chick living in a in a in a, a dozen eggs. There is no possible way that this the temperature in my freezers are at right above freezing. There's no. Chickens are a fragile creature in the first place. You can't have a little bird is not going to survive the transport from the farm to the factory to my store. This no, baby I'm not chick sure what did, you're trying man. to do here. This ba- hey, 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 I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I'm not going to go this back and forth with you either. If you want to bring me a dozen eggs, bring the dozen eggs in. If you can catch the chick, Catch a chick. Hey man, you can't. You, you're supposed to be the manager. You're not supposed to talk to me like this. So I've been trying all. to tell you uh, as politely as possible. If you want to bring in the the eleven eggs and a chick, I will gladly refund your money, give you another carton eggs, whatever you want to do. But I'm not going to sit on the phone. I'm going to file a lawsuit because y'all done traumatized me and my lawsuit. kids. Sir, listen. All right, let's just bring this down. A lawsuit, sir. It over. Uh, 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 a, a dozen eggs. Oh, oh I mean, a dozen eggs that got a baby chick in it, man. So let me, uh, let me get your phone number and some information, and I will talk to my manager, 
and we will figure this thing out for you because I, I just I just don't believe that this would be possible. I just I don't understand how you would have let, chick, let him let, just leave him over there. Don't touch the chicken. I, I just don't believe that this could possibly be happening. So this is it's, it's unbelievable to me to even get this phone call. Sir, sir, I don't have time to go back and forth with you about how something happened. All I know is it maybe it's a fluke accident, okay? But it happened. My kids are over here playing with a <laughs> baby chick. And, and, and I'm traumatized. I don't even want to ever have breakfast ever again. And I'm going to make so I file a lawsuit on your show and your show. Me? I don't think that has anything to do with me. I, I didn't do anything uh, uh, except come into work today. You understand what I'm saying? If you want to file a lawsuit, okay, file I'm a lawsuit. File a lawsuit. I'm filing so a lawsuit on the grocery me. store, and I'm filing a lawsuit on the manager, Warren, which is your for giving me a hard time about what I'm telling you that happened. And you ain't even got a hard time on the media. You understand what I'm saying? You want a hard time, come down here with those eggs. I'm bringing the eggs down here, and I'm bringing that baby chick that back uh, down there too. I'm bringing all of it. Well, please, because I'd like to see it. How much did you pay for those eggs? I paid about $2. It ain't about how much I paid for the eggs. It's what you have traumatized Oh, me. yeah, because I'm going to give you just that much back in the when you get here. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't, I don't give a I got, times, I got cousins out here in line, legitimate people on my attention, and not some jack on the telephone talking about some chicken and a driven egg. Okay, well, let me let me tell you this, too. Do you have a guy that works at the checkout uh, uh, named uh, Tyron? Yes. Okay, Tyron got me to prank phone call you. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Warren, your just got pranked. What? <laughs> you kidding me. <laughs> Hey, man, look, <laughs> man, I need to come up with chicken, chickens going through eggs, man. Man, I'm about to, I, I swear to God, I got people looking at me in this store like I'm crazy. Hey, one, I got to ask you, man, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, it's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> You check out guy Tyrant. He got you, man. Yeah, I'm going to get his <laughs> too. I'm going to put him back in produce. I'm going to take him off the <laughs> register. How about this? I get him stacking eggs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. Huh? You played a nephew much. song, baby. <laughs> you did the damn thing. Holler at them really kids. Did. Yeah. Put that baby hey, chick down. Uh, it might have rabies. Put the baby <laughs> chick down. Don't put touch down. it. <laughs> it might have rabies. Stupid. <laughs> Don't make me come Body back stuff. there now. Oh, my Don't God. Don't make me. Yeah. <laughs> now you have everybody. Uh, Go ahead, Tony. Go ahead. Let me drop this date on him real quick, Jay. This is uh, the music hall, Detroit, Michigan. The nephew is coming. That's October the 16th, baby. October 16th. It's the sweet day. The sweetest day comedy takeover. Dominique is in the building. Rodney Perry in the building. Tommy Davidson, a legend in the building. Guy Tory, that's my boy. My ride or die in the building. Hosted by yours truly, nephew Tommy. Tickets on sale right now. Music hall, October 16th, Saturday night. Detroit, Michigan, sweetest I saw, day I saw that comedy. Tea. I saw that. Take sweetest I saw day, man. Man. I we finna, we finna act a fool. We finna act a fool. Oh, come, on. Yeah. come on. Come yeah. on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Back on stage, man. I'm excited. Didn't uh, it feel good to be happen. back out there? I know I do. It does. I, it feels it does. really good, man, to get back on that stage. I hope we don't have to go through the drought we went through ever again. Yeah. Whew. It took me two shows to remember that stuff, Tommy. It took me two shows. Do y'all know what to do with yeah. yourself when you ain't on stage? Do you know what to do with yourself when you ain't not on stage? No. 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 Your own pace in the flow. The stage <laughs> is your life, man. Yeah. Buy some shoes. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Go I ain't never wiped counters before. I'm wiping counters now. I can tell you what to do. All right. Thank you, nephew. <laughs> Coming up next, Strawberry Letter. <laughs> Subject, my girl is wild and free. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one. Pop it right like here, it's hot. Right now. Pop it like it's hot. Pop it like mm-hmm. it's hot. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. 
next one. All right, subject. <laughs> My girl is wild and free. I knew the guys would like the title of that letter. It yes! says, Dear Stephen Shirley, uh-huh. I'm a 31-year-old man, and I met a really dope woman at a house party. She's 30 years old, no kids, with a good job, and her own house. I started vibing with her at the party, so I asked her out. Uh, two days later, she picked me up for our date, and she asked to use my bathroom. She left the bathroom door open and told me to come in. She sat on the counter, whispered a few words in my ear, and I almost lost my mind. After a few rounds of amazing sex... What? After a few rounds of amazing sex, we sat up talking until 5 a.m. She told me she was in a long-term relationship and her ex broke her heart by cheating on her, so she wasn't ready for a serious relationship yet. She told me as soon as she saw me at the party, she knew she wanted to do me. I love her honesty and free spirit. We've been hanging out and having sex all summer, and I'm falling for her. We decided to drive over to the beach last weekend, and I got an Airbnb. I invited three of my college friends that live in the city to come by our Airbnb so we could catch up and have a few drinks. My girl got along with everyone, and the conversation was flowing, and the music was pumping. My girl got tipsy and started twerking. Then did a little lap dance on one of my boys. I was so embarrassed because I didn't explain what kind of relationship I had with this girl. She gave my friend her IG handle and told them to follow her on uh, IG. I felt mm. like a fool as she did this in my face. I was quiet the rest of the weekend, but we still managed to have a lot of great sex. As we drove home Sunday, she brought up the incident and told me to stop pouting because she's developing feelings for me. I feel like it's all a game to her. Uh, is it possible to keep having sex without catching feelings? Well, yes, it is. I mean, everything's possible, but usually this scenario right here that you just described, it's usually the women who, um, you know, who think that they can uh, do this and get away with it, but the women oftentimes end up wanting more. They're the ones that fall in love with the guys. That's usually how this turns out, not the other way around, not the man. Uh, of course, there's an exception to every rule, though, right? And you, sir, are what we call sprung right now, okay? Uh, you can't possibly be falling for this woman, though. I mean, she told you up front that she wasn't ready for a serious relationship. She also told you that she wanted uh, to do you as soon as she saw you at the party. She gave one of your boys a lap dance right in front of you, okay? You said you felt like a fool. This made you feel like a fool. What part of not ready for a serious relationship don't you understand? Uh, you, you can't fall for her right now, okay? She, she doesn't want that. She, she's all over the place. I mean, will you be comfortable with her? Are you going to be able to trust her with your boys? All that. This is what's going to be on your mind. This woman is doing, like I said, what a man normally does, and she's not ready. You're going to get hurt and hurt badly. She was hurt, and she's trying in her own way to heal and to forget about her ex who broke her heart. Um, she just wants to do you, okay? Usually guys would be like, yes, this is what I want. Yes, no commitment. So you need to slow down if you can and realize that if you want her, you got to, you know, get with her in her time or you're going to get your heart broken. But you got to ask yourself, is this really what you want? Because she's showing you who she is now. Listen to what she's saying and watch what she's doing, sir. Jay? Why, this is a crazy, crazy letter, man. She, he met this girl at a party. They was eyeing each other. She invited, mm -hmm. he invites her over to the house. She goes to the bathroom. She says, come in here. She's probably butt naked. They do it in the bathroom. She says, I'm a freak. What you have met, sir, You what you have met is an honest freak. You met an honest freak who's freaking you and telling you everything up front, what she likes to do. Why are you writing us? I mean, why? Man. What you I know, know this thing so these happy. these strawberry letters are for people who have problems. I'm listening to this letter and where's your problem? She's a freak. The honest Super freak. freak Jay. She told you 
She likes to freak. She told you to get about your feelings. Why are you acting like that? I'm halfway liking you. Where's the, where's the problem? Help me with the problem. If I saw a problem, I can help you. So if I could sit at this letter, I've went over this, I've listened to Shirley, I've read the letter over and over, and in this letter, there are no damn problems. Why are you writing us with this? <laughs> don't waste our time Wasting if you don't time. have a problem. Go ahead, Jimmy. I mean, this is stupid. What really? Do you want? <laughs> this, what do you want? <laughs> I'm through. I got nothing else to say to this. Uh, uh, uh. I'm done. I'm just done. <laughs> So, so, so what you think I'm gonna say, Jay? Yeah. What I'm gonna think I'm gonna say? I don't. I don't see this. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> I knew you guys were gonna be with me. I'm, I'm gonna tell you one more thing when we come back, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right, hang on, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We'll have part two of the strawberry letter uh, coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject: My girl is wild and free, and the guys seem to love it. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we're going to recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, my girl is wild and free. A 31-year-old man wrote this letter. Uh, he met what he calls a really dope woman at a house party two days after he met her. She picked him up for the date. Um, she was in the bathroom, left the door open, came in there, whispered something in his ear, and they had the most amazing sex imaginable. Two days later, first date, uh, she said she wasn't ready for a serious relationship, but he's falling. He's falling. He says he loves her honesty and free spirit, but he's falling for her. She's not ready for a serious relationship. She already told him that. Her ex broke her heart by cheating on her. So she's just wilding right now and, and free. Uh, she got tipsy the other weekend, started twerking in this Airbnb he got for them on the beach. She did a little lap dance for one of his bo boys. He felt like a fool, he said. She did this in his face. Um, she, you know, she brought up the incident and told him to stop pouting because she's starting to develop feelings for him. Um, but he says he feels like it's all a game to her. And is it possible, he wants to know, to keep having sex without catching feelings? I said, normally that's what men do, have sex without catching feelings. Usually it's the women who do catch feelings, no matter how they started out. But this one's a little different. She's taken on more of the guy role here. Uh, and uh, Jay is saying, what is the problem? She's a freak. Uh, you know, that's what guys like. They don't want to commit, a lot of them. So what is the problem? Junior, finish your response to. You're kind of in agreement with Jay what, here, of what, course. What, <laughs> me and Jay thought the same thing. What do you want us to tell you, young man? Don't, <laughs> it don't matter. Yeah. Okay, fine. She a freak. Let's roll with it. Fall. You want to fall? I'm falling for her? Fall. Fall. Bust your face. With her, <laughs> hit Bust the concrete with this with one. Her? Bust your face with her. This girl here, what man don't want this? Okay, this is what I knew. You, you, you really didn't understand what you had. She, thirty years old, no kids, with a good job and her own damn house. What freak you want? This the best freak you can ever possibly have. She got no kids. She got her own house and a good job. You, you not this, this, this upper level freaking. <laughs> <laughs> Jackpot. Love I, that I've is. been with some. No, no, no. It's upper level freak. I've been with some freaks that had nothing. They had kids. They had no house. Yeah. Right. See, it's different. You got to go to the freak house and her mama looking at you. It's not yeah. the same. Can't be freaking till mama go to sleep. We can't be freaking till mama. We got to wait for her mama go to bed. And she got this kid on my lap. I'm, I'm, right, I'm rocking right. a baby on the lap. So, yeah. <laughs> You got everything. What you want me and Jay to tell you? Shut up Thank and you, fall. Junior. Just fall. Bust your Shut face. Shut up and fall. All Shut right. up and Thank fall. you, Junior. <laughs> Come on, Tommy. What you got, Neff? Uh, you have been having a summer booty bash. That's what you've been having. Oh, Thank you. Not a title. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. this is Man. a summer booty bash, Man. and you have everything at your beck and call. She is she's willing to give you whatever you want. So let me just tell you, since since, since I can't do it, you know, let Man. me live through you. 
Okay, so I got some things I want you to do for me. All right, because there's some places you ain't y'all ain't even got started yet. We got some places we got to go, boy. We got to get in the backyard with this. Okay, we got to we got to bring a few friends in. We got to throw a friend party where we got about 10, 12 people. These are things I can't do, but you can do them for me. Okay, all right, how about this? Selfish. How about this? Catch a flight, catch a flight, and while y'all in the air. Get in that, get in that little tiny bathroom in the, uh, uh, yes. on the plane. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you see you. that right there? Well, see, I can't like do that. Yeah. Do that for yeah. me, okay? Like set a bathroom. camera up. Set a camera up when y'all had a party. All right, <laughs> throw a party that's four, five, six out. Nice, good, butt naked mm -hmm. party. Everybody, butt mm -hmm. naked, but, but nice, butt naked party. All right, and then when you get through, send the video to Tommy because I'm living through you. Okay, <laughs> this is you and I. This is something that we're committed on. Rocka. I'm going to keep committed. my commitment with you, even if she don't. All right, our commitment is straight. Okay, all right, me and you going to ride this out, boy. I'm going to get, matter of fact, I've always wanted to do it on the fire truck. Okay. Right there. Sneak down there to the fire station. Wait till something get ready to happen when the sirens going and everybody see right there. Y'all on the back of the truck. Woo! You get it going on. That's what I'm talking about. It's stuff like that that I never got to do. Live okay? through him. You living through him, right? I'm living right. him. Yeah. Uh, of uh, uh, what they call it, uh, Vera Crossley. Uh, I yeah, yeah. But anyway, seriously, like Vera Crossley. You gonna stop? <laughs> what? What? The boy said. Whoa. He said Vera Crossley. I'm living very close. Very closely. Very close. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> There's some other places that we got to do with it. All right. Yeah. Me like 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 yeah. me and Junior like cigar balls, cigar lounge. Yeah. Right in there. Yeah. I, 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 I imagine do it that. all the time, yeah. but I can't ever yeah. do it. Okay. All right. Now, how about this? Go down, go down to uh, uh, the convenience store and go in the freezer and shut the freezer right when it's real cold. There you go. It. First of all, he, he doesn't have a problem. Tommy knows what he wants. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Get the gym, get the gymnasium at the high school, play some butt naked basketball, and have there you fun go. in there. You see what I'm saying? What? I'm falling for her. Okay. Yeah. Bust your face wide open. All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, we got to move on now. Uh, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after, our resident poet, Junior, is here. Oh, with a, with a brand new poem? <laughs> with yeah, a brand new right. poem right after this. All right, Junior. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, what you got for us before you get to your poem? Can't wait for okay, that. Okay, before I get to the poem, Shirley, yes. let me just tell everybody that the Steve Harvey Morning Show and Walmart and Family Mobile want to help you get ready for back to school this year. So enter for a chance to win a high-end smartphone, six months of Walmart Family Mobile service, plus $2,500 cash enter and get rules at steveharveyfm.com all thanks to walmart family mobile get 40 gigabytes for under 40 dollars a month from walmart family mobile powered by t-mobile get all this info at steveharveyfm.com that's what i'm gonna do that first now we're gonna get to the poem before i get to that don't forget y'all labor day weekend star dome birmingham coming be there all right Third, okay man field. five all right five boy show, Jay. get them no, we man. all gotta get back out get here em. gotta go to work get them gotta go get to work Get your yeah. tickets now. Just go to stardome.com, get your tickets. You already know where to find us. But let me just tell you this now, Jay. You've been watching the Olympics. Yep. I don't know, and I'm just saying this. Some of these events, we don't need. We like, we don't need race walking at the Olympics. <laughs> right. Well, it's over now. Have, but, <laughs> yeah, I know it's over now, Carl. But some of these events, I don't need to see next year because they're wasting my time. I watch four hours of people <laughs> walking fast. I can already do that. How did you continue to watch? I can't believe it's a four-hour race. <laughs> or I'll walk race <laughs> walking so this poem I wrote today is talking mm -hmm. to United States men's basketball team oh, we right. barely beat France mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we supposed oh. to be the greatest basketball players in the world guess we ain't cause we just barely beat France we <laughs> lost twice well well, the poem is for the United States men's basketball team here it go and it's called Ooh. United States men's basketball team <laughs> That's just the name of it. I didn't have time. I was mad. We won 87 to 82. So I said, We glad y'all won. What took so long? We glad y'all won, but what took so long? 
When you lost them two games, we thought y'all was gone. We glad y'all won. To time to celebrate. I almost missed the game because it came on too late. What time did y'all play? <laughs> About what? Stuff, we glad y'all won. We saw you do your dance, but we had a real tough time because you barely beat France. <laughs> so we glad y'all won. Y'all got the goal, but, but Milwaukee has the dream team. Just let the truth be told because they won the championship. The end. I'm mad at the American basketball team. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Yeah, no, I don't care. What? I don't wow. care. I don't care. I'm mad at them. They I won. They took y'all so long. They won ugly, so though. Long. He didn't like that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Junior. Great poem as usual. <laughs> Coming up at the top of the hour. The comedians Race are here, walking. so you know what that means. <laughs> Time for comedy roulette right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we go. It is time for Comedy Roulette. The comedians are in the building. Jay, please explain. It's very simple. You take three subjects, put them on a wheel, spun the wheel where it stopped. We'll make it funny. Watch us do it. Go right here. Yeah. All right. Today's categories, let's hear them. Number one, (laughs) whoa, (laughs) things a Karen would say to black people. Uh Are you serious? Uh Uh Okay. All right. Um, Things you forget on your trip. Good one. And things you do at other people's house when you're not looking, when they're not looking. Uh, Things you do at other people's house when they're not looking. I like that one. Okay. All right. right. Let's spin the wheel and see what happens. Spun it. Spun it. Know what I do with other people? Oh, I know what I do. <laughs> Touching everything. I'm doing everything. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> Are you it for stopped real? on things a Karen would say to black people. Let's go. All right, we're uh. doing comedy roulette. Things a Karen will say to black people. <laughs> things like. Why are you in first class now? Really? Why are you? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. We've all Ooh, gotten out. What's we doing? Go, yeah. Go things, ahead. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> things a Karen would say to black people: You're going to jail as soon as I call. Wow. <laughs> mm. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Things they a Karen that. would say to black people: Why are you black people lying on the beach getting a tan? You're black already. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, wow. Calling oh, the cops. Wow. <laughs> wow. Things a Karen will say to black people: Comedy roulette. You know, I know the governor. Really, I do on a first name basis. <laughs> really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who cares? Yeah. So do we. Hey. Hey. Things a Karen will say to black people. You know this park has a dress code? Do you understand that? <laughs> uh, things, things a Karen would say to uh, to black people. Uh, you don't think you're going to barbecue that chicken in this park, do you? Surely you don't think that. <laughs> Not here, pal. Wow. Not, Not here. here. Uh, wow. Things a Karen will say to a black people. Women know this one. Women have heard this one. Can I touch your hair? Can I just touch oh. your hair? <laughs> I'm getting mad at this comedy. That's the ass that. That. <laughs> yeah. I told you we should have done the last one. Don't get mad, Carla. They would say that. Don't get mad. This is real. Yeah, I know. This is so real. This, 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 how, this how, first of all, this is things Karen would say to black people. I happen to know Frankie Beverly Mays personally. <laughs> what? what? Really? Don't what? nobody care? <laughs> We love Frankie music. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Things that Karen would say to black people, so your child really is going to go to a four-year college. Really? Really? Wow. I like oh your voice, Tommy. Oh, my God. Ah, yeah. uh, comedy roulette, things that Karen would say to black people. You sound so educated. Ugh. I mean, oh, where'd that come from? Uh, yeah. Where'd that, uh, yeah. Where did that's that it. come from? That's yeah, it. That's it. Well so spoken. Articulate. You're so articulate. Yeah, you're so articulate. Yeah, articulate. Uh, spoken. So articulate. Yeah. <laughs> Things a Karen would say to black people, um, you know, today is just not a good day for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, love I say what the hell one? I'm Can say? I say one, please? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
I wish a Karen would. That's what I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, Junior. Right. I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad. Things that Karen would say to black people. So you mean to tell me you live in this neighborhood now? Really? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You live yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Right Cause I know everyone on HOA and no one has told right, me about it. Right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> all right, close it out, Jay. Oh, right, here we go. Here we go. You know what? White lives matter too. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Those are fighting words, Karen. <laughs> Man. All right. Well, listen, thank you guys. Coming up, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, on Thursday, Kanye did his thing again at another Donda listening party at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium uh, in Atlanta. That, of course, is his home right now. His estranged wife, Kim Kardashian, wore an all-black Balenciaga uh, outfit, which included a long-standing ponytail. Uh, Kanye and Kim's children were there, and it's good to see them co-parenting. We hear the Donda album release date has been pushed back again to maybe August 13th or August 15th. Did you guys see her suit? I saw it. I yeah. have a yeah, question. You know, I have a question. Mysterious yeah, looking question? black. Uh-huh. Where, where is Kanye going to stay when the Atlanta Falcons start back playing football? Where, where is he going to stay? Then? Where is he going to live? Baby, he's going to have to be gone out of there by then. Uh, I, 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 have, <laughs> I have another Kanye question, too. Out the <laughs> Uh, when does, your, I have another question. When does your ex show up to any damn thing you're doing? That's what I need to know. When. <laughs> and, and oh, you you've never there. experienced that, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, it's called co-parenting. And the whatever. Kids what, and she whatever. She had the kids. So, yeah. <laughs> you, you, have you had an ex-wife come to even one of your comedy shows, Jay? Not one. Not one. <laughs> not a one. <laughs> and if they came, would you be really nervous? <laughs> Would you be if nervous? I saw sitting in the audience, I'm nervous as hell. Something going on. <laughs> Something. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> coming, <clears throat> coming up uh, next, more of the Steve Harvey Morning. Let me do that again. Coming up next, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 33 minutes after the hour. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. So President Obama had his party okay he turned 60 he had his 60th birthday party it was at Martha's Vineyard it was epic okay it was epic we all saw the video that Erica Badu posted of uh, 44 dancing at the party mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. was cool I saw that it. was cool I saw mm-hmm. it. I did see it. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. We heard special guests Beyonce, Jay Z, Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, George Clooney, Jennifer Hudson, Don Cheadle, Dwayne Wade, Alicia Keys, John wow. Legend. All of them saying happy birthday Whoa. to our forever president. Also, bathroom amenities included antiperspirant wipes and Advil. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Make a note of I like that, that for the Boy, next party. I like that. Yeah. He, he uh-huh. really care. He really care. Uh huh. Yeah, he does. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, rapper Trap Beckham and his manager posted pictures of themselves smoking cannabis, which is legal in Massachusetts, but they had to take their pictures down. The Roots Quest Love was asked to help coordinate a meat-free menu. However, we saw pics of steak, chicken, and shrimp. Mm. Uh, also, okay. <laughs> hey, he turned 60, what a okay? Yeah. <laughs> These vegans uh, getting also, out there of was hand, the- ain't they? <laughs> there was cigars, there was s'mores, there was uh, Mexican hot chocolate, brownies, and watermelon. It was sounds like a good time had by all, okay? All. Yeah. That's and what watermelon. I thought. Did I you say watermelon and watermelon? So, yeah. I said watermelon and brownies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brownies. brownies. I bet, I bet nobody that. touched it. I bet it was just still sitting there because, you know, people yeah. don't want nobody to see them eating watermelon. Unless it's diced up. You know, if it's on the rind, it's still sitting there. No, it needs to be in a bowl, dice. It needs to be in a bowl, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I did see a couple of slices on a plate on the rind. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did see that on the gram. What? There are some black people who don't give a damn. If it's watermelon, it's watermelon. You know, some of us go in. I mean, it's the best time. But, that you is, know, it happy is. birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Yeah. 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 Happy yeah. birthday. I heard the, uh, the police were hating because afterwards it was just so much traffic, so they were angry. I was like, y'all just hating. Oh, y'all shut just up. Yeah, hating just hating. It's, it's the town. president. Yeah, Martha, it's the president. The president. complain president. about that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it, Tommy. Daddy. Just straight that's hate. That's it. Just straight that hate. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, speaking of party, the party is over. There were the most... Unusual games in history, and now the Summer Olympics in Tokyo have come to a close wow. after being postponed for a year due to COVID-19 and ultimately held without spectators. For safety reasons, uh, the Olympics delivered some memorable moments. The United States came away with the most gold, 39 medals, and the most medals overall, 113. Yep. China was number two in both counts. Coming up, it is our last break of the day. Get on out of here. We got no more breaks. We're done. We got no more. And we'll t- and at 49 minutes after the hour, we'll tell you what OJ did, what he's afraid of, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Last break of the day on this Monday. It's been a good day, a good Monday. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We, Starting the week we off. We got to tell you. When I, wow. when I saw this, I said these exact words. Crazy AF. And uh, yes. in today's Crazy AF news, O.J. Simpson, who, who will you don't not get somewhere and sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, O.J. is refusing to go to L.A. now. Please, somebody ask me why. Why? Mm-hmm. He said he won't why? go. Why? Why? Because he's scared. He's scared to go to L.A. He's scared that he might run into the real killer. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? OJ. OJ. He said this out OJ. of his mouth, okay? If yeah. you want to if you want to see the real killer, find any room that has a mirror in your house. All right, say OJ. I said, but stop walking by mirrors. Yeah, stop walking by mirrors then. Stop walking by mirrors. If you want to see the real killer. Right. Yeah, o- OJ says he will not visit LA due to a fear of running into the real killer of his ex-wife. And, of course, her friend, um, Ron Goldman, his ex-wife, Nicole Brown. O.J. told The Athletic, I have trouble with L.A. People may think this is self-serving, but I might be sitting next to whoever did it. I really don't know who did this. As you know, O.J. was referring to the murder of his former wife and her friend after the pair were killed back in 1994. They were both found dead at Nicole's home in Los Angeles, and O.J. was arrested and charged with their murder. However, he was eventually acquitted by a jury following the most viewed judicial uh, proceeding in American TV history. Okay? Come on, OJ. This really? is really absurd this, right here. Really this this takes the yeah. cake. This yeah. really yes. takes the cake. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what he going to do? Like, He's... I mean, maybe he do better riding around in a white Bronco looking for who he is. How about he do that? Maybe. Would well, that help? Come on. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, despite being found not guilty in a civil lawsuit in 1997, OJ found, uh, was found liable for the wrongful deaths of Goldman and Brown in order to pay Goldman's family $33.5 million. OJ went on to say, I figured eventually someone would confess to something, you know? I had one suspect I told my lawyers to look at. I still think he might be involved, but I can't talk about it. OJ also added that he lived... A good life now in Vegas. He said, how many Americans, even today, wouldn't like to live my life? What? What? I don't nobody want your life. Don't nobody want to be known. Nobody wants your life. He's making absurd statement after absurd statement. You know what? You got to give it to OJ. You got to give it to OJ. He is such a cut up. For what? Give it to him for what? For For convincing himself. He is such a cut up. He is such a cut up. He's a cut up. I mean, he's doing a great job at lying to everybody, though. I got to give him that. He lying to everybody. He's doing a great job. He might be sitting next to the killer. No, who's ever sitting next to you is sitting next to the killer. (laughs) Right. Right. 
know what call. Oh my god. He take a, it's a yes. whole new meaning to lying to the end. This is a whole new meaning Man. to lying to the end. This, I'm this talking right about here. ride the lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you gonna ride your lie out, do it, OJ. <laughs> um, okay, but this statement right here. Yeah, this, this is crazy. Was, I figured this eventually crazy. someone would confess to something. Well, when um, you gonna I do had it? One spec, one as soon as you I speak up. Lawyers, to look at mm -hmm. i still think he might be involved but i can't talk about it but then shut up about it all then <laughs> oh, just, why can't oh, you talk okay. about it why can't you help them find the the killer why can't you help was... find the killer of the mother of your children so yeah, you can't is... help investigators do that come on come on when he was in the driveway yeah i just that went to jail somewhere and sit down Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, sit down, enjoy the rest of your life, and shut the hell up. Man. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Just shut up. Yeah, yeah. You and got away stop. with it. Be quiet. Yeah. That's you it. got away yeah. with it. Just he, shut up. You yeah. got away with he it. He added that. Yeah. yeah, He added that he lives yeah. a good life now in Vegas. What you, like what you need to do is you and Bill Cosby need to have lunch together and talk about how y'all got away with it. That's what y'all need to do. That was Jay. Oh, wow. Stop that was talk. Jay. Oh wow. That was Jay. <laughs> That wasn't me. That was Moving Jay. on, Shirley. That was Jay. Oh, wow. That was Jay. I'm in shock. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we are moving on. In other celebrity news, Kenya Moore Ooh. has filed for divorce from uh, Mark Daly. Kenya filed for divorce back in May, stating that their marriage is irre irretrievably broken, and she wants primary custody of their daughter, Brooklyn. Tashina mm. Arnold files for divorce after separating from her husband, Rico Hines, due to irreconcilable differences. They have been separated for the past five years. COVID did it. So wow. that's COVID did it. celebrity divorce news. Yeah. Can I just COVID. break this that's news, y'all? I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell y'all this, but I'm gonna tell y'all this. This is just breaking news on the morning show. I just wanted to know that. What's that? Kenya been dating. We've been dating. You and Kenya been dating. <laughs> is that what you I just said? I, to, I just said I don't know how to put it out there. I mean, you might well just know the story. Sure, you just read it. Okay, but well, I'm the other dude. Mm. Do you know what know. Cheryl is this, Underwood going to do to you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this as big as the OJ lie? Because they're right up there, aren't they? <laughs> it's <laughs> damn near up there, Jake. Right up there. <laughs> <laughs> He's right up there, Jay. Yeah, he better right bring it back, Jay. <laughs> wow. This is horrible. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> we oh, my God. Just, I hate when those relationships don't work out, but... Yeah. Sorry for yeah, Kenya, sad. but... Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's y'all. <laughs> well, well, you don't well, feel well, the hey, same Jay, way, Jay. Jay, ride your what? lie out, Jay. We're, we're, we're doing fine. Uh, <laughs> we do. we're, doing, we're, we're doing fine. <laughs> All right, Jay, take us out, please. All right, everybody, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Watch out there now. That was Jay that said that. that was For Jay. all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 